From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report in Special English. Scientists are criticizing a study that said laboratory rats developed tumors after they ate genetically modified corn. The research appears in the journal Food and Chemical Toxicology and includes pictures of rats with large tumors. The study said the animals developed the growths after two years of being fed genetically changed maize. Gilles Eric Seralini was the lead author for the research paper. He is with the University of Caen in France. He says genetically modified or GM foods have not been studied carefully. However, several French scientific organizations and the European Food Safety Authority dispute the study. One genetic expert with the National Academy of Sciences in the United States says the rats in the study were genetically predisposed to form tumors. Allison Van Enanum is with the University of California, Davis. She suggests that the study was an attempt to scare the public. She said, I think it was a cynical ploy to exploit the scientific process to create fear in the minds of consumers. Even some opponents of GM food agree there were problems with the study methods. Michael Hansen, with the group Consumers Union, says there should be more long-term studies and more rules for GM foods. Safety studies or assessments are voluntary when companies ask the government to approve new GM crops. These assessments often include 90-day rat feeding tests. This is the international standard. Experts say longer studies have not found major problems. For VOA Learning English, I'm Alex Villarreal. This is the VOA Special English Health Report. Sleep disordered breathing is a term for a group of conditions that can interfere with normal breathing while people sleep. These include snoring, mouth breathing, and sleep apnea. Sleep disordered breathing can do more than just leave people feeling tired the next day. It can also affect people's health. In children, the effects can include behavioral and emotional problems. In a new study, researchers asked parents about their children's breathing from when they were babies up to about age six. The parents also answered questions about behavior at ages four and seven. Karen Bonick at the Einstein College of Medicine in New York led the study of about 11,000 children. She says sleep disordered breathing was associated with a 50% increase in what she calls adverse neurobehavioral outcomes. These included hyperactivity, aggressiveness, and problems relating to other children. Ms. Bonick says the more serious the breathing problems, the more serious the behavioral issues were likely to be. Other studies have linked sleep with children's behavior, but this study was extensive enough to reject other possible causes. The study appeared in the journal Pediatrics. An estimated one child in 10 snores regularly. A smaller number suffer from other sleep disordered breathing. 
How well do you sleep? A popular belief is that sleep gets worse with age. But in another new study, those who reported the fewest problems with sleep quality were people in their 80s. Researchers did a telephone survey of more than 150,000 American adults. Michael Grandner at the University of Pennsylvania Medical School says the original goal was to confirm that aging is connected with increased sleep problems. The survey did find an increase during middle age, worse in women than men. But except for that, people reported that their sleep quality improved as they got older. Or, as Mr. Grandner points out, at least they felt it did. The findings are in the journal Sleep. Health problems and depression were linked with poor sleep. But Mr. Grandner says older people who are not sick or depressed should be reporting better sleep. If not, they need to talk to their doctor. They shouldn't just ignore it, he says, nor should their doctor ignore it. He says health care providers generally dismiss sleep complaints from older adults as a normal part of aging. For VOA Special English, I'm Alex Villarreal. Get more health news and learn English at voaspecialenglish.com. From VOA Learning English, this is the Health Report in Special English. Hundreds of thousands of Russians die every year from diseases linked to smoking. The country has one of the highest smoking rates in the world. The World Health Organization estimates that 40 percent of adults in Russia smoke. That is about 44 million people. The WHO says China leads the world in tobacco smoking rates. It says Russia is second. Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev recently made an effort to reduce the number of smokers in his country. He proposed a ban on smoking in public places by 2015 and a ban on all tobacco advertising. And he proposed to increase the country's very low cigarette taxes. In Russia, a pack of cigarettes can cost between one and two dollars. Mr. Medvedev appeared in an internet video about the issue. He said Russians must stop smoking. He said about 90 percent of Russian smokers begin smoking before they reach the age of 20. He said smoking kills about 400,000 people in Russia each year. He compared the loss of life to a large city disappearing from the country's map. The Prime Minister also warned about the way smoking kills. He described long and painful deaths from cancer or emphysema, as well as sudden deaths from heart attack and stroke. Still, smoking continues to grow in some groups. The number of Russian women who smoke has increased sharply in the past 20 years. In 1992, about 7 percent of Russian women smoked, 22 percent do now. Yet approval from the upper and lower houses of parliament may not limit Russian smoking. Many experts say the government does not have enforcement power to put the law into effect. For VOA Learning English, I'm Mario Ritter.